Welcome to More Than Mindset, the only podcast that bridges the gap between spirituality and success. Go beyond the mind with clarity and confidence coach Kim Guillory and learn how to integrate your passion to serve with your skills and experience to create a business you love. Let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome back to the show. I have another fun one for you. I've invited three integrative life coaches trained by moi (laughs) about all of the magic that we are doing and offering. And what I've asked them to come on and talk about is the materialization of illness and disease and chronic pain that presents itself in the physical body. And so when I say disease, I'm talking D-I-S dash E's, disease, dis-ease in our life will show up as disease in our body. We're, we're just going to ask these gals a few questions. I did say gal, right? <laughs> a few questions and just kind of let you hear different takes on the same thing. So We're going to do a little panel like, and I'm going to ask the same question to each one. And then we're going to talk about the problems that they solve, the solutions that they have and what they've experienced in their own business. But first off, I'm going to allow a few moments for each of them to introduce themselves. So we're going to start with Kayla. Hi, I'm Kayla Ken Cannon. I'm an integrative herbalist in Louisiana. I recently opened a physical location of an herb store downtown And I help people just pursue their mind-body connection so they can move on with life and actually enjoy what they're doing every day. Thank you, Kayla. And Monique? Hey there. I am Monique Derwin, and I am an integrative therapist. I live in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, and I teach people how to release chronic pain and live the life that they have been waiting to live. So you guys may remember Monique, we did an episode a couple of weeks back. So that's something you go back and listen to. And we have Kelly. I'm Kelly Messerly. I'm from Springfield, Missouri, and I'm an essential oil specialist. So I help people identify the root causes to chronic conditions and try to help resolve them, let them feel better and have more energy, more vitality. Perfect. So I met all of these Fine, folks. Monique and I went to massage therapy school together. We had a lot in common. We had multiple certifications. We had all of the things, all of the the certifications on the wall because we were trying to help people. And as soon as we would get to the next step, we would see there was another problem. There was another problem. And then we just continued educating ourselves and finally came to this common denominator. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Kayla is actually local to me. And I met her at when I was in fitness, right? Kayla, like back in the day. So I've had a physical location, multiple locations. And Kayla was a client. I know she was, she would come for yoga. That's when I first learned that she was doing herbalism. She was becoming a master herbalist. And I was like, super interested. I wanted to know all of the witchy details. <laughs> and Kelly and I met at an Aroma Touch training. We were both leaders for doTERRA and we were getting certified to be Aroma Touch leaders so that we can travel the world and teach our team and other people how to use this amazing modality because it's the jam. Am, guys. I think all of you have been trained by me, by the way. I mean, the ones here that really to help heal the nervous system. It is like magical. So if you guys have not checked that out, you should. Okay. So I have a couple of questions. I'm just going to go through the room. This is super casual. We just want to get some input on the experiences that they've had with their clients and what are some solutions. So I'm going to start with Monique and we just did a podcast on this. You and I, we did a show about the kind of things that you see. I'm just going to ask you, what have you experienced that is different about the integrative approach? Like you came through the integrative coach training with me, all of you did. And this is where we really solidified the process that works. And so using your own language, how would you tell people what does integrative mean? Like, why do we use that word? Why do we call ourselves an integrative therapist or an integrative coach? The simplest explanation for me is just merging all the information. You know, it's taking the scientific information, the practical information, the five-step approach from the punchline, you know, and 
putting it into play with all of the things that I already knew, but I couldn't make sense of in that moment. And integrating it has allowed me to embody this on a physical level, on a mental and emotional level, and a spiritual level different than anything I've ever experienced before. Alrighty. Kayla, how about you? How would you say that the integrative approach is different? Because you're a master herbalist. You've been in, you know, kind of working with this whole mind-body connection, helping bringing natural health to your family and to the community. What would you say to someone who has no idea, like, what is what does that mean? What is integrative? Why do you call yourself that? What's so different or special about it? What would you say? It's like bringing all the parts together. Not one person is only one thing. And so we're all different moving parts trying to function in this earth on this body that we've been given. And what integrating does is like it melts everything together to like to solidify yourself as one whole and one complete being, as opposed to just the physical, just the mental, just the spiritual, just the emotional. And then once that clicks, there is a satisfaction of knowing that you're not parts and pieces. And that's really what the integration is, is you're not parts and pieces. You're one whole being. And that's what integration does. I love that. How about you, Kelly? Because you were in the essential oil, well, you still are in the essential oil world. And I know you. we met at Aromatech for the same reason is, you know, we had our clients or members, what are we calling them? <laughs> like our, our people in our team that, you know, even though we believe so much in the oils, you know, and it was so helpful for us, we had a deeper understanding, but what would you say is different about this integrative approach that, that drew you in? I think for me, it, I mean, it's just basically what these girls have said. It's kind of all the combination. It's going further. It's not just a Band-Aid. I mean, there's so many great modalities out there and they work, but sometimes you know, it's not going to do it all. I mean, there's more to it. You have to go further. You have, you just can't stop at one thing. It's not a quick fix. It's. That's yeah. I think we're all saying the same thing. It's kind of like, you don't really understand it until you know it. And then there, we have a different language. Once you know it, it's the craziest thing. It's like, we have a language of our own. <laughs> that's what people say. Anyway, they're like, I had no idea that book you wrote. Don't know anything about that until I knew it. And then everything made sense. So that's why I wanted to get your feedback on how do you explain it or describe it so that it can give a variety of voices to those who are listening. So even though they can't comprehend how I'm saying it, you know, maybe the way that you explain it, you know, for analytical learners anyway, I use the analogy of the pie, right? It's like the pie is cut in four pieces because the systems are cut in four pieces. You have to go to the doctor, the physical doctor, you know, for the physical part of your body, then your spirituality, you go to church, you go to religion. And then the physical part, you have to go to a psychiatrist or a counselor or a psychotherapist. And then ain't nobody taking care of the emotional part. It's like, it's just void. It's not even a part of the pie, right? They just kind of threw it out. And what I say that we do when we're bringing the integration is we're bringing all parts of the pie and then it becomes seamless and we step into that wholeness. And that's where we have this natural peace and joy and calm. It's so easy. It just feels so easy when all parts of us are on board. So I'll move to the next question, which is what was the, I'm going to say the, like, for lack of better words, the struggle with, like when you were working with people before with the oils, with the herbs, with massage, what was the problem that you kept coming up against that you couldn't solve with just that modality that this solved for you? Let me start with Monique. I mean, I can physically manipulate tissue all day long. And if we don't know what the root cause is, that shoulder pain will still be there. The digestion issue will still be prevalent. The migraines will continue to surface because we can't just rub the root cause out of the body. We must do that from a different space. And, you know, the mind-body connection is the most fascinating thing I've ever learned. And that and being able to apply that with my clients on a physical level and an emotional and mental level was definitely the game changer in my personal business. What did it look like before you had this, like this, when it, when you were just like, I would say like when you were just using oils or when you were just using massage or when you were just using herbalism, like what was the problem that led you to want to go and know something else? Basically that they felt amazing when they left my table, you know, and life was grand and uh, I got all the praise. And then three days later they were back at work or they had a teenager that did something or the mother-in-law showed up or life happened. And at that point, their nervous system was shaken up and they didn't understand that 
It was the emotional response in the body. It was the mental disconnect that was creating the dis-ease, the lack of ease. So being able to give them that on a different level, you know, when I worked with one client and they started talking about the shoulder pain and I gave them the root cause for shoulder pain, I thought they were going to fall off my table and, and cry because it was so real. The ability to give them the awareness, you think like that's yeah. like having the yeah. language for, for exactly what was going on so that they can have the understanding. Right. To be able to give them the background of the root causes of the emotional disconnect and for them to be an awareness of that immediately was like, oh my gosh, my body just loosened. I mean, in seconds, the brain allowed the body to decompress. Yeah. I want to just like visit that for a second because, and this is for all of you as we move through this, it's really whenever you can put words to what your people or yourself or even your family are experiencing, there's actually someone listening. That's like, that's me, me too. That's me. Like I thought I got it. I thought I, I mean, I got the pain meds. I got massage therapy. I went to physical therapy. I like, I went to counseling. I did the thing. That's to me what the biggest pain point is all of the effort that the people have already put and, you know, us being, a part of that, you know, before coming to this work and there's nothing wrong. I'm not saying there's anything wrong or right about any of it. It's just watching the evolving as we understand how much deeper it took to get to the root cause. <laughs> when we first got into massage therapy or we first got into the oils or we, we thought it was all magic, right? The first time you got into mindset, you thought it was magic, but it was really yeah. just another tool. Well, and what's even further is We can give the information for the root cause, but until they're actually ready to go in and apply it, that's a whole different step, right? So I can tell you all day long, you know, knees are not being flexible and and the information, but until we stop and we actually unravel that, unveil that and go into that belief, that's a whole different aspect. I think neurologically... And nervous system, why it's just the defense is so strong. It's not even intended. Like you guys can see it. I know you like with yourselves and with your clients is we were in denial and we were in resistance also, right? Because you all came through the program. I've worked with all of you. And even for myself, it took a variety, you know, of different people working with me to be able to see it in a way that I felt safe and I was willing to receive it and kind of step into that curiosity phase. Yeah, it's definitely not the conscious aware person that's fighting this. It is the unconscious story and the traumatized brain and the person that's just been hurt, you know, that's using that defense as their mechanism to survive. And yeah, as a habit, pull back, habits yeah. of survival, yeah. <laughs> habits of survival, I think. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Monique. If someone is like kind of in that, that stuck point where they've read the books, they've done the things they've tried and they're just looking for that. Now it's CBD, right? That's the next new secret, whatever it is. What have, what has been the experience for you that kind of pushed you to go and find out more? What I see and still do most commonly, it's, it's two sides of the same coin. Almost they come in and they're angry and frustrated at their bodies for hurting or for being sick or whatever, like this shouldn't be. And I can't do that. And then the other side of it is almost a resignation. Well, I'm 40 now, so I guess knee pain is just how I've got to live. And so they would come in and they wanted, it's, I called it substitutional. <laughs> okay. I'm taking this medication. What herb do you have? Or I have a headache. So what it was more of like a, a pharmacy almost setting because that's the, how they were conditioned to treat a symptom of something. And so to get them to the point, like Monique was saying, just explaining the possibility that, hey, if you don't fight your body, it might, (laughs) you know, be able to to communicate back and forth to where something can be done. Or at the same time, just because you're a certain age doesn't mean you have to suffer. Like the concept that you don't have to be in pain just because you're 50 years old, it's really something that they have a difficult time believing. And that's where I tend to work a lot with my people. That's where I start is just getting them to understand that this might be possible. As soon as, you know, you can get into that might stage, you can go further. 
Yeah. So what I hear you saying is like the, we've actually been hypnotized or mesmerized by this information and you, the work that you in particular are noticing is you're doing a lot of the unlearning, like you're exposing and educating. That's the phase that you see yourself in with your clients, like with, with, or with yourself, with your family. With all of it really. And especially in this area where the idea of herbal medicine is also foreign. So I feel like when my clients walk in, I'm trying to introduce them to two concepts they may not have ever heard before, or if they heard about it, they're not quite sure they believe it's possible. And so it's very much still in the unlearning because I feel like I'm, in, you know, I'm introducing them to something they've never had any experience with. Yeah. Do you find that there's a lot of convincing? Do Are they interested? Are they curious? Like what's the first step? Like let's just use, for example, someone's coming in because I remember this so well in the area with even the essential oils, right? I had been using essential oils for 22 years in my business before I ever started with doTERRA. That's crazy. But back in the day when I had the nail and tanning salon, I took a class at massage therapy school way back then in the 1990 and had been using oils ever since. So when doTERRA came out and started doing it, I was like on top of my game because I already had the understanding and the, you know, started teaching it. And I had so much resistance, like the snake oil, she's a witch. Oh yeah. You know, like there was so much of that. So I'm curious if that's what you're talking about is that they really just haven't even heard of, of it. Like, that there was something else because they've always listened to what the doctor said or what the the story was. Yes, definitely. And the, the, just the idea that they can be in control and they can say no, and they can ask questions. It's a lot of unconditioning. I love that. Cause you and I talked about on the podcast we did together is they didn't even know they could question their doctor. They run into that a lot or I'm not on any medication. Okay. Well, great. Well, except for this, this, and this, and it's, A lot of that too is like, oh, well, it's just a blood pressure medicine, or I've just take aspirin three times a day. It's just this whole realizing (laughs) that they're on medicine until someone asks them specifically a type. Like it's such as part of their daily habit and routine and how their minds are working. And so I do get, it's not so much resistance. It sounds like awareness. They're not even aware. Yeah, very much awareness. And then most of them come in, they're curious to begin with. But then you also get the, well, I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll try it. Or I read that it worked somewhere else and maybe it'll work for me sort of thing. I remember that being the beginning of phase for myself. And I think I told you this, I would go to the herb shop in Grand Coteau and I would just buy everything. Like I'd buy the crusher, I'd buy the little teacup, I bought, like I bought all the things, all the things, but I was in exploration phase. And I think that, you know, we can honor all of these phases, you know, the questioning phase. The let's explore, the curiosity, the I'm going to try it, and then the committed face, right? And it's like, I think for us as the practitioners is if we can really settle in and just kind of drop that urgency that we feel, because we want to help them so much because we know better now, right? We've experienced it ourselves. We know how much we suffered. And I know for myself, I had such a deep urgency that people had to get this because in my mind, they were all killing themselves. Like, oh my God, you know, and we had the statistics, like a 28% suicide rate. That's, that's real. I mean, my neighbor, two doors down, 30 years old, like that she, a month ago, you probably heard about this. I mean, it is real. It's in my... I'm not making this stuff up. So, I mean, inside of me, I was like, they have to know. Everybody needs to know. And, you know, it was like crazy, but my nervous system was on fire and I was like trying to show it. They couldn't receive it. And so I think I wasn't honoring the question phase, the exploration. You know, I didn't see it that way, but now I do. And that's what it sounds like you're experiencing also, which makes me feel super excited. (laughs) that there are other people. I feel like I have such a strong team, you know, on board with me that I'm not doing it alone. Like I had been for all of these years. Thank you. Kelly, is that the same? That's you shaking your head. Is that the same thing that you're hearing? Cause you've been in the essential oil world for how many years? Cause we met a long time ago. Absolutely. I find you have some people who it's like, like their identity, you know, like I have fibromyalgia. My mom had fibromyalgia. Like it's this, it's almost like they're proud of it. I don't want to say that in a, in that way, but it it's kind of safe. is. It's like it's their, they don't know who they would be without it. It's, it's safe and familiar. I'm with you on that one. Yes. And I see Monique shaking her head like we're realizing this too. That's why I love input from everyone. Yes. Yeah, say more, say more, because I don't, I don't want it to come kind of like you feeling apologetic because we're not saying that you want it and you got to do it. We're saying it's unconscious, a part of you. 
Yeah. And I think they just don't really believe that they, they do have the power. Like we can take control of our health. We can do this. There is something you can do. You know, that would be the message I'd like to say is just you guys take control of it. You can do this. You know, it doesn't have to be our, your identity. You don't have to live like that. And then the quick fix, you know, there, I mentioned that earlier too, just the whole quick fix thing. It's they want to try lavender one time and think that they're going to sleep like a baby. And when it doesn't work, then they just want to give up and then they want to go get a prescription that drives me crazy. <laughs> it's like I'm saying with the phases, like you have to first recognize there's a problem, right? It's almost like the punchline approach works. <laughs> it's like first you got to get a present. And then the whole unraveling process, like how long would you say, Kelly, that so they come in, they want the oil, they want the result immediately. What's, what's the average time for someone who's unaware, who doesn't, who hasn't stuck with it, like the give up phase, would you say, I noticed in fitness, I'm going to interject in while you're thinking about it, that, that I had read, it takes approximately eight times to join a gym before you actually commit to it. Like you quit and stop, quit and stop, quit and stop. And I'm curious, what was your experience with the oils? Like that quit and start phase. I mean, obviously you can get a result the first time you use something, but it's also the longer you've had something, the more consistent you need to be in your, your practice or your mod- modality or whatever it is to get the result. So like, if you've been dealing some with something for years, then I would say like one month of consistency for every year that you've dealt with it. Like you can't expect it to just be overnight. Yeah. And I'm thinking of how many hundreds of people we go through with the essential oils, with massage, with herbs, with now the CBD thing. I mean, this is huge guys. Like, I mean, it, I have been confronted or approached so many times to bring that into my business when I was doing, you know, so much with the essential oils. And I mean, how you could make all this money and they presented all the, the, the layers of it. I mean, it went on and I said, this is the next It's just the next thing. It's just the next thing because, and Monique, you live in Colorado where it's completely legal out there. So I know you see a lot of this and I'm not knocking CBD. Believe me, I'm not. I've tried everything. And when I say everything, I've tried everything. It's the, what I'm trying to say is I think the mindset of the majority is that there is this one thing, but you're not necessarily lacking that one thing. There's, there's no such thing. So Kelly, I'm going to let you speak a little bit more on that because I really want to hear what you have to say about you noticing that too. Cause you say this pretty often. Yeah. Well, what's coming to mind for me too, is the longer you're looking outside for something else to fix each modality, every time you're looking for another one, the further you are from figuring it out. I figured that out for myself, you know? It's like the more you're looking outside for the answer, the longer it's going to take for you to really, truly find the answer and get the solution that you're wanting. Monique, are you seeing it in Colorado also whenever they legalized all of the stuff that it started bringing in a lot of people thinking that was the answer? So, you know, what we need to understand first is that we naturally have an endocannabinoid system in our body, you know, and while... A, you know, all of these modalities and supplements and additives, whatever we want to call them, are beneficial. They can do excellent things for us. We actually have our own pharmacy inside of us. And I believe if people really understood the simplicity of what I just said, they would stop looking outside of themselves, just like Kelly said. It's, I'm constantly out here looking to fix the problem but the problem is inside of me because my thoughts and actions are not in alignment. And, you know, that's what we do in punchline is we explain that part of it. And when that very, very simple five-step approach is understood and applied, the need for all of the outside things does not exist. Then it becomes things that we do for fun. I go get a massage because I enjoy getting a massage. I go to the hot springs because the water feels nice and it's a great environment to be in versus I'm going there for healing or I'm going there to fix myself or I'm going there to feel better. I don't have to call someone up and say, fix me anymore. I actually just stop, open up, settle in my body. We do that little SOS and then we start with punchline. And in a matter of moments, 
I can decompress my nervous system, calm my body, release physical pain and move forward with ease. And there is absolutely nothing like this in the entire world that I've ever done before. And I will preach this hands down for the rest of my life. So that's what I got. I kind of feel like that too. I was like, I'll never stop talking about this. Like it just brings me such satisfaction, you know, and as being a six, two generator, it's all about satisfaction. <laughs> so if I am satisfied, I am joyful and peaceful. Everything is easy. Everything comes like just kind of flows through Kayla. I see you shaking your head. So would you say that that's what's one of the goals that you want to attain through your store is that people are coming in for some sort of tea just for pleasure rather than fixing a lot of them are coming in out of fear is my doctor told me that I have to take this medication, but I really don't want to. What else can I do instead? So people are questioning the whole medicine thing. Yeah. Like that what if you're they're not that? questioning their doctor or anything like that. They're questioning the need for it. And honestly, I think the publicity that has been put in lately to the opioid crisis and those kinds of things do have people questioning, do I really want the side effect or is there something else I can do? Or even, okay, my doctor told me to have surgery, but I don't want to have surgery now. So can you help me like prolong it? It's a lot, a lot of fear-based. And then of, there's a lot of curiosity, of course, just general, what is this? Is it seasonings? Like <laughs> I've gotten those people asking me things like that before too. <laughs> this is Louisiana. They want to cook. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. I love this, by the way. Like just the fact that they're walking in the door. Do you remember just when this was just an idea? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spent hours talking about this idea, but really I do. I get some curiosity, but a lot of it is fear. They don't want to do anything. They don't have to anymore. Now the concept of the mind body connection and herbalism are, uh, I think curious. They're afraid they're learning to question. And so I think that's a good sign. You're talking about like the way that we relate the part of the body and what's the emotional root cause is that would you, the mind body connection part, like when we're talking about, like, if it's thyroid, it's not using your voice. If it's, you know, feet, it's not moving forward or like that kind of thing is the thing that you're saying they're questioning. It's like, wow, I didn't even know that th that's a thing. <laughs> they all understand that their brains control their bodies or they understand that stress could make them sick. But it's getting them on the flip side that the positivity can also make you better. They all know that stress kills you, but the, it's the to get them to the other way, to look in that mirror. But I think we throw that around. Stress will kill you. Anxiety is not good for you. That, I, I don't really think they understand what about it makes the same. Like, I don't think they have the connection. I think it's just, it's like the positive memes that are floating around on social media where it's just intellectualized. I, I don't think, I'm wondering if that's what you're experiencing. It's so far-fetched because uh, yo, how many years have I been saying it and putting it out there? It's just now that we have 30 coaches who are like on board and doing and stuff. But like I, the, the feeling I get is when you're talking relief, relief. Thank you. Thank you. All of you who are, are saying it and who are exposing and who are offering, because that's how we create impact. We create impact in multitude. Like it's, it's going to take an, a, a tribe. It's going to take an army. It's going to take a force, you know, a movement because it's so far fetched from the norm. Oh, you're over 40 now. Oh, you broke your leg. You're for sure going to have arthritis. Hear it all the time. My family says it all the time. My husband was saying it this morning. Like he told me two things he's going to have to do. And it's all kind of like that. You got to wear the hat so you don't get the cold. You got to like, it's, it's, it's so innocently like in us so deeply rooted in us. And I have so much compassion now and so much more understanding that that's what we're up against. Now we can create a plan. Before I was just coming from that, you know, just trying to explain it, explain it without understanding why they weren't understanding. And I feel like that's something that we can offer. Would you all agree? Would you, does anyone want to, I'm going to let you guys just raise your hand and offer to, to give feedback instead of calling you down. Especially like you said, that's what I was, we were talking about earlier about the like resign that this is just the state of my life forever or even <laughs> my knee hurts. And so therefore it's going to rain. You're, you're going back generations when you're trying to convince people that their bodies don't have to perform a particular way just because they had another birthday or whatever it is. And so we are fighting a, a thick layer of belief and everybody of course understands and interprets it differently. But I am very grateful that we have this ability through the technology, even to get out there and reach a bigger and broader audience and just kind of see who's 
piquing people's interest, if nothing else, even if, you know, they go and research on their own. It's just nice to know that we have this out there available and that we can tell other people it. Yeah, yeah, that's, you're right. And I mean, that's how we got so much of our own education and own understanding. Kelly, I'm looking at the deep blue that's behind you. And I want to talk about two things that I've done and just how you maybe connect this with your own people, your tribe is whenever there's a funeral here, or someone's really sad, like I always bring deep blue and breathe to them. And it's not, it's because it's actually addresses physical pain. Like, I don't think people understand that about essential oils, that we're actually working on the root cause. We're working on that reconnecting the disconnect, not on the actual physical symptom. Like, it's already in our education, right? We, like this is why aroma touch is designed the way that it is. And we use those exact oils is because of what it's doing on an emotional and energetic level. So you want to kind of connect the dots of that. You want me to ask you more clear? I'm seeing you look at me like, where are you going with this? But do, have you put that together? Like breathe is the reason I bring breathe to a funeral is because grief is processed in the lungs. And the reason I bring deep blue is because we're addressing emotional pain, not just physical pain. And those two oils are a perfect example of that. Yes, absolutely. Because all the oils have emotional benefits to them. So anything that could be good with the heart or the lungs is going to be good for, like you said, for a funeral. So geranium would be good for trust and love. But breathe, yes. Oil of breath. When we are stressed, we tend to not breathe. So that helps open the respiratory system up, supports that, and allows us to breathe. Absolutely. I love it. I love the emotional side to oils. Me too. That's what got in. That's how we met. I put Rose on me. I had like my friend lost her son and it was like just so heartbreaking. And I just put a little drop of oil of Rose and I had three people, the three closest come up to me and just like, they were just drawn to it. It was the craziest thing. I came home and I fixed them all some little samples, but Rose is the ultimate heart healer. And the, the watching them being magnetized to that, the way that it happened was, it really blew my mind in a, in a whole new way because the grief was so real and so deep. And so, you know, and, and, and it's like, they, they couldn't, it's almost like they couldn't get enough. That was very impactful. Gosh, I don't, there's so many good ones. Frankincense, of course. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking of Douglas fir because the generational patterns and when it first came out and we were at convention and we're, I was, you know, sitting with a couple of other people and they were dealing with some stuff in their families. And when that oil came out and opened it, they were just <laughs> same thing. It's like, it was just this intense drawing in, put it underneath their feet. And it was like a way to like move through those generational patterns. It was moving through those, the cycles so those are all interesting things. I could talk about that all day. I don't know as much about herbs. I wish I did, Kayla. I just have to let you be the expert, but these are things that we've all played with before. So we're running out of time here. So I want to give each of you an opportunity just to share a message, just to talk to your person, or maybe just instill some hope for someone who is just coming into this work. Like they don't even know that there's a connection between the mind and body. Like, what would you like to share or that I haven't asked you maybe, or that you're just like sitting here like, Oh, I wish they knew, or I really want to say this. Go ahead, Kelly. I think I would like to start with just for my personal journey, it would be to just be patient with yourself and give yourself some compassion. Don't be hard. I was really hard on myself. I still struggle with it sometimes until Kim, you know, puts me in my place. (laughs) So just remember it's a journey and you know, you need to, you need to go the path to like really, truly get the healing, the full healing. So don't be in a hurry, be patient, give yourself some grace, know that you can do it. You can do this. So, and there's help and there's community like this come here. Cause that's what we're here for. And we want to help That's This is our mission. So that's it, I guess. So good luck. <laughs> That's a hard one to asking for help, come for help. There's so much shame in this stuff, you know, that we don't want to like really share all of the the injuries or the traumas or the stories. And that shame is, I mean, it's really a big part of what's impacting us. So it's preventing us from asking for the help. It's preventing us from showing up in a vulnerable way and transparent. So thank you for mentioning that. Kayla? Kind of to, I guess, build on what Kelly was saying is that it's okay to not be okay. It really is like okay to not feel well. And once you learn to accept that, 
then the next step is just what if, what if my body is actually trying to send me a message? What if it's talking to me? What if just be open to that one question? You don't have to be open to everything, but just be open what's possible and drop the shame, of course, and the judgment all associated with it. And just, just go, go forward and get curious. Yeah. I love that. Monique. Yes. So I just kind of want to build off of what they've said as well and finish up with remembering that for me, understanding emotions and feeling the emotions was one of the most difficult things and understanding that vulnerability wasn't necessarily a scary thing and that selfish wasn't a bad word. And that when I worked on the emotional side, the physical pain actually subsided and to just make that connection was really huge. And so just remember that when we exhale, we actually release physical pain. And that was something that I learned when I was in my twenties, but didn't really understand until I was in my forties. And so healing is available and we are our pharmacy. And if our thoughts can make us sick, our thoughts can also make us well. And so I just really want to leave the audience with that just to ponder on. And if they have questions, contact us, reach out, ask us, and let us give you the feedback. Let us hold the space for you and show you that this is available for you as well. Because once we crack open that one little spot and it starts happening, it's a whole different ball game. I never want to go back to where I was. I want to keep going forward. So I just thank you for where we are and what we've been able to accomplish here and yeah, buckle up. Everybody jump in. Let's go. <laughs> buckle up, Buttercup. You can find all of these coaches in the More Than Mindset Facebook group. We are there. All of us, we do things every week. We show up. You can ask questions, introduce yourself. You can tag one of the coaches. They've. It's getting to where they've almost all been on the pod. We're bringing more and more on the podcast, and we're going to do more of these panels. And the More Than Mindset is also a place that we gather questions so we know what to ask here, you know, so that we can give answers. Because I promise you guys, if you're thinking it, if you're wondering about it, so is someone else. So don't be afraid to be a little transparent and ask for what you don't know. We spend so much time saying I know and wanting to look smart and wanting to look wise that we are actually preventing ourselves from knowing more, from knowing something else. And the things that we have been taught by the medical community is what was available for the medical community back at that time. It's not a right or wrong. It's really just wasn't someone hadn't gotten curious enough, (laughs) you know, to really bring it in. Because here's the thing about science. If we're not questioning and if we're not finding out new stuff, it is not science. Science is the act of questioning. It is the discovery of. It is like we should move from one study to another study to another study. And then what? And then what? And then what? It should be a continuously questionable thing, not stopping at one point. We are an evolving species. So I want to thank you all for coming on. I love doing these things. I appreciate your time, your feedback. And most of all, I appreciate you being part of the community, a part of the movement, a part of just moving and driving this forward and giving it to more people. Thank you. I have all of your links in the show notes so you guys can reach out to anyone here. They all do online work, so they're available. It's Monique, you do you still do some on site? I know Kayla, you do some on site, some on location. Monique, are you consultations and things like that? And Kayla has a store, an actual store. Yep. All right, my friends, that is it for this week. Thanks for listening to this episode of More Than Mindset. 